Today, I have an important message for all of you who have set goals but struggle to stick to them. I know it can be frustrating and discouraging when we set out to achieve something and end up falling short. But let me tell you, you are not alone. In fact, it's a common struggle that many people face. The good news is there are ways to overcome this challenge and stay on track towards your goals. That's why in today's message, I want to share with you five powerful ways to stick to your goals. These are principles that I have personally used and have seen tremendous results in my own life. And I believe that by listening to this message, you too can turn things around and start making progress towards your goals. So if you're ready to learn how to stay committed and focused on your goals, then keep reading because I am confident that these five ways will help you overcome any obstacles and achieve the success you desire. Let's get started, starting with number five. As we continue on our journey of personal development, it is important to remember that the path to success is not always easy. It requires hard work, dedication, and most importantly, a positive and persistent mindset. So what exactly does it mean to stay positive and persistent? It means having an unwavering belief in yourself and your abilities, even when faced with challenges and setbacks. It means choosing to see the glass as half full instead of half empty. It means never giving up, no matter how many times you may stumble or fall. My friends, I can tell you from personal experience that staying positive and persistent is not always easy. In fact, it can be one of the most difficult things to do when faced with adversity. But I can also tell you that it is absolutely crucial for achieving your goals and living a fulfilling life. Let me share with you a story about a young man named John. John had a dream of becoming a successful entrepreneur and creating a better life for himself and his family. He had a clear vision of what he wanted to achieve and had set specific goals to get there. However, as John began his journey, he faced numerous challenges and obstacles. He was met with rejection, failure, and even criticism from those around him. It would have been easy for John to give up and let go of his dreams. But instead, he chose to stay positive and persistent. Every time he faced a setback, he reminded himself of his ultimate goal and why he was doing what he was doing. He surrounded himself with positive and supportive people who believed in him and his vision. And most importantly, he never gave up. He persisted through the tough times, and eventually, his hard work paid off. Today, John is a successful entrepreneur living the life he had always dreamed of. My friends, this is the power of staying positive and persistent. It is what separates those who achieve their goals from those who give up. So how can we cultivate this mindset and make it a part of our daily lives? The first step is to focus on the positive. It is easy to get caught up in negativity and dwell on our failures and shortcomings. But I urge you to shift your focus to the good things in your life. Take a moment each day to reflect on what you are grateful for and celebrate your small wins. This will help to keep your spirits high and your mindset positive. The second step is to surround yourself with positive and supportive people. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So choose your circle wisely. Surround yourself with people who believe in you and your goals and who will lift you up when you are feeling down. And remember, it is okay to distance yourself from those who bring negativity into your life. The third step is to practice self-care. Taking care of your physical, mental, and emotional well-being is crucial for staying positive and persistent. Make time for activities that bring you joy and help you relax. Exercise regularly and fuel your body with nutritious food. And most importantly, be kind to yourself. We all make mistakes, but it is important to forgive ourselves and keep moving forward. The fourth step is to reframe your thoughts. Instead of seeing challenges as roadblocks, see them as opportunities for growth and learning. When faced with a setback, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? And how can I use this experience to become better? By reframing your thoughts, you can turn any negative situation into a positive one. And finally, the fifth step is to never give up. As I mentioned earlier, success is not a straight path. It is filled with ups and downs, twists and turns. But if you stay positive and persistent, you will eventually reach your destination. Remember, failure is not the opposite of success. It is a part of success. So keep pushing forward, even when it feels like the odds are against you. My friends, staying positive and persistent is not a one-time thing. 
It is a daily practice that requires constant effort and determination. But I can assure you, the rewards are worth it. Not only will you achieve your goals, but you will also become a stronger, more resilient person in the process. Now, to number four, which is celebrating small victories. Many of us have big dreams and goals that we want to achieve. But often, we get overwhelmed by the enormity of these goals. We start to doubt ourselves and question whether we are capable of achieving them. This is where celebrating small victories becomes crucial. It allows us to break down our goals into smaller, more manageable chunks and celebrate each step of the way. Think about it. When a baby learns to walk, we don't expect them to go from crawling to running in one day. We celebrate each small victory, each step they take towards their ultimate goal of walking. And the same principle applies to our own goals. We must learn to celebrate each small victory, each step we take towards our ultimate goal. Now, some of you may be thinking, but Jim, why should I celebrate small victories? They are just small steps towards my big goal. And my response to that is, why not? Celebrating small victories not only gives us a sense of accomplishment and motivation, but it also allows us to reflect on our progress and see how far we have come. We live in a society where we are constantly bombarded with messages of instant gratification. We want things fast and easy, and when we don't see immediate results, we get discouraged and give up. But the truth is, success is not a straight path, and it takes time, effort, and dedication to achieve our goals. Celebrating small victories helps us stay on track and reminds us that progress, no matter how small, is still progress. So how can we celebrate small victories? The first step is to define what a small victory means to you. It could be completing a task, reaching a milestone, or overcoming a challenge. Whatever it may be, make sure it is something that brings you closer to your goal. Next, take a moment to acknowledge and appreciate your achievement. This could be as simple as giving yourself a pat on the back, saying a few words of encouragement to yourself, or treating yourself to something you enjoy. The key is to take a moment to celebrate and recognize your progress. Another way to celebrate small victories is to share them with others. This could be with friends, family, or even on social media. By sharing your achievements, you not only spread positivity and inspiration to others, but you also hold yourself accountable and motivate yourself to keep going. Now, some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what if I don't achieve my goal? What if I fail? My response to that is, so what? Failure is a part of the journey towards success. It is through failure that we learn, grow, and become better versions of ourselves. And even if we don't achieve our ultimate goal, celebrating small victories allows us to appreciate the progress we have made and the lessons we have learned along the way. I want to share a personal story with you all. When I first started my journey towards success, I had a big dream of becoming a successful entrepreneur. But I faced many challenges and setbacks along the way. There were times when I wanted to give up, but I reminded myself to celebrate small victories every time I closed a deal, received positive feedback from a client, and learned something new. I celebrated, and before I knew it, those small victories added up, and I had achieved my ultimate goal of becoming a successful entrepreneur. Now, on to number three, which is staying accountable. Accountability is the glue that holds our goals and dreams together. It is the fuel that keeps us going when the going gets tough. Without accountability, our goals are just mere wishes floating in the wind with no direction or purpose. But with accountability, our goals become a reality, and our dreams become our destiny. So, what exactly does it mean to stay accountable? Simply put, it means taking responsibility for our actions and being answerable to ourselves and others for the outcomes. It means setting clear and measurable goals, creating a plan of action, and consistently tracking our progress towards those goals. It means being honest with ourselves and acknowledging when we fall short and taking the necessary steps to get back on track. Now let me ask you this. How many times have you set a goal for yourself only to give up on it a few weeks or months later? How many times have you told yourself that you will start that diet or exercise routine on Monday, only to find yourself making excuses and pushing it off for another day? How many times have you promised yourself that you will save more money or spend more time with your loved ones, only to let life get in the way? We have all been there. We have all experienced the frustration and disappointment of not following through on our goals. 
But the good news is it doesn't have to be this way. By staying accountable, we can break this cycle of self-sabotage and finally achieve the success we desire. So, how do we stay accountable? The first step is to set clear and specific goals. Many of us have a general idea of what we want to achieve, but we fail to define it in concrete terms. For example, instead of saying, I want to lose weight, set a specific goal such as, I want to lose 10 pounds in the next three months. This gives us a clear target to aim for and makes it easier to track our progress. The next step is to create a plan of action. A goal without a plan is just a wish. We must break down our goals into smaller actionable steps and create a roadmap to achieve them. This not only helps us stay focused but also gives us a sense of direction and purpose. But having a plan is not enough. We must also consistently track our progress towards our goals. This means setting aside time each week to review our actions and see if we are on track. If we are falling behind, we must take the necessary steps to get back on track. And if we are making progress, we must celebrate our wins and use that momentum to keep moving forward. Now, here's where accountability comes into play. It's easy to make excuses and let ourselves off the hook when we are the only ones holding ourselves accountable. But when we involve others in our journey, it becomes much harder to give up. This is where an accountability partner or a support group can be incredibly beneficial. By sharing our goals with someone else, we are not only making a commitment to ourselves but also making a commitment to them. And when we have someone else holding us accountable, we are more likely to follow through on our actions and stay on track. Another powerful way to stay accountable is to publicly declare our goals. This could mean sharing our goals on social media or with our friends and family. By making our goals public, we are not only holding ourselves accountable but also inviting others to support us and hold us accountable as well. But perhaps the most crucial aspect of staying accountable is being honest with ourselves. We must be willing to acknowledge when we fall short and take responsibility for our actions. It's easy to make excuses and blame external factors for our lack of progress. But the truth is, the only thing standing in the way of our success is ourselves. By taking ownership of our actions and holding ourselves accountable, we can break free from self-sabotage and finally achieve our goals. Moving on to number two, which is to create a plan. You see, having a goal is great. It gives us something to strive for, something to work towards. But without a plan, a goal is just a wish. It's like trying to build a house without a blueprint. You may have all the materials and tools, but without a plan, you end up with a mess instead of a beautiful home. The same goes for our goals. We need a plan to guide us, to keep us on track, and to help us overcome any obstacles that may come our way. So, how do we create a plan that will lead us to success? Let me share with you some key points. First and foremost, we need to be specific about our goals. Many of us have a general idea of what we want to achieve, but we need to be more specific. For example, if your goal is to lose weight, how much weight do you want to lose? By when do you want to achieve this goal? Being specific not only gives us a clear target, but also helps us measure our progress. Next, we need to break our goals down into smaller, more manageable tasks. This is where many people get overwhelmed and give up on their goals. They see the end result and think it's too big, too daunting. But if we break it down into smaller tasks, it becomes less intimidating. And when we accomplish each task, it gives us a sense of achievement and motivates us to keep going. Now, let's talk about the timeline. As the saying goes, a goal without a deadline is just a dream. We need to set a timeline for each task and for the overall goal. This not only helps us stay on track but also creates a sense of urgency. When we have a deadline, we are more likely to take action and make progress towards our goal. Another important aspect of creating a plan is to anticipate any potential obstacles. We all know that life can throw us curveballs. But if we have already thought about potential challenges and have a plan to overcome them, we are less likely to get derailed from our goals. Remember, it's not about avoiding obstacles. It's about being prepared to face them and keep moving forward. Now, let's talk about accountability. It's easy to make excuses and let ourselves off the hook when we don't have someone holding us accountable. That's why it's important to share our goals and our plan with someone we trust. This could be a friend, a family member, or a coach. 
When we have someone to answer to, we are more likely to stay committed to our plan and achieve our goals. But creating a plan is not just about the end result. It's also about the journey. We need to enjoy the process, celebrate our successes, and learn from our failures. It's important to have a positive mindset and not get discouraged when things don't go as planned. Remember, every setback is an opportunity to learn and grow. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, I don't have the time to create a plan. But let me tell you, if you don't have the time to plan, you don't have the time to succeed. Planning is an investment in our future. It may take some time and effort now, but it will save us time and frustration in the long run. And now, I want to share with you the number one way to stick to your goals and make them a reality. And that is by setting specific and achievable goals. Let me ask you this. Have you ever set a goal that was so vague and general that you had no idea where to even begin? Maybe it was something like, I want to be successful, or I want to be healthier. While these are admirable goals, they lack specificity, and therefore it becomes difficult to create a plan of action to achieve them. On the other hand, setting specific goals means defining exactly what you want to achieve and how you will achieve it. It means setting a clear and measurable target that you can work towards. For example, instead of saying, I want to be successful, you could say, I want to increase my income by 20% in the next six months. This goal is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. But setting specific and achievable goals is just the first step. The next step is to make sure that these goals are achievable. Now, I am not saying that you should limit yourself or set small goals. In fact, I believe in dreaming big and setting audacious goals. But at the same time, we must be realistic and consider our current circumstances and resources. For instance, if your goal is to become a millionaire in a year, but you are currently struggling to make ends meet, then that goal may not be achievable in such a short time frame. However, if you break it down into smaller achievable goals, such as increasing your income by 10% each month, it becomes more realistic and attainable. Setting achievable goals not only helps us stay motivated but also allows us to experience small wins along the way. These wins serve as fuel for our motivation and keep us on track towards our ultimate goal. Now, I want to share with you a powerful technique that will help you set specific and achievable goals. It is called the SMART Goal Setting Method. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-Bound. Let's break it down. Specific means defining exactly what you want to achieve. Measurable means setting a target that can be quantified or measured. Achievable means setting a goal that is within your reach. Relevant means setting a goal that aligns with your values and priorities. And lastly, time-bound means setting a deadline to achieve your goal by. By using the SMART method, you can turn your vague and general goals into specific and achievable ones. Let's take the example of wanting to be healthier. Using the SMART method, we can turn it into, I want to lose 10 pounds in the next three months by exercising three times a week and following a balanced diet. This goal is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. But setting specific and achievable goals is just the first step. The real challenge lies in sticking to these goals and seeing them through to the end. And this is where many of us struggle. We get excited about setting goals. But when it comes to taking action, we often fall short. So, how can we stay committed and motivated to our goals? The answer is simple, by creating a plan of action. You see, setting goals is not enough. We must also have a plan in place to achieve them. And this plan should include specific actions that we will take to move towards our goal. For example, if your goal is to increase your income by 20% in the next six months, your plan of action may include actions such as networking, taking on additional projects, or learning new skills. By having a plan in place, you are setting yourself up for success and increasing your chances of achieving your goals. But even with a plan, there will be times when we face challenges and setbacks. And this is where the power of perseverance comes in. We must be willing to push through the tough times and stay committed to our goals. Remember, success is not a straight line. It is filled with ups and downs, but it is our determination and perseverance that will ultimately lead us to our desired destination. So, my friends, I urge you to set specific and achievable goals, create a plan of action, and persevere through the challenges.
And I promise you, you will see your goals become a reality. Thank you. Are you someone who struggles with self-sabotage? Do you often find yourself getting in your own way, hindering your own success? Well, you're not alone. In today's message, we'll be discussing the common ways in which we sabotage our own success and, more importantly, how to put an end to it. Self-sabotage is a common issue that affects many individuals, and it can be a major obstacle in achieving our goals and dreams. But the good news is, it's not a permanent state. By listening to this message, you'll learn how to turn things around and start paving the way towards your own success. So, if you're ready to take control of your actions and break free from self-sabotage, then stay tuned because in just a few moments, I'll be sharing with you five powerful ways to stop sabotaging your own success. Let's dive in and start creating the life you truly deserve. Starting with number five, which is to stop sabotaging your own success by practicing self-care and self-compassion. Now, you may be wondering, how can self-care and self-compassion help us achieve success? Well, let me tell you, my friends, they are the foundation on which all other success is built. Success is not just about external achievements. It's also about our internal well-being, and self-care and self-compassion are the tools that help us maintain that well-being. So, what exactly is self-care? Self-care is the practice of taking care of our physical, emotional, and mental needs. It's about making time for ourselves, prioritizing our health and happiness, and setting boundaries to protect our well-being. It's not selfish, as some may believe, but it's necessary for our personal growth and success. We live in a fast-paced world where we're constantly bombarded with responsibilities, deadlines, and expectations. We're always on the go, trying to keep up with the demands of our jobs, families, and social lives. And in the midst of all this chaos, we often forget to take care of ourselves. We neglect our physical health by not getting enough rest or exercise. We ignore our emotional needs by not addressing our feelings and emotions. And we overlook our mental well-being by not giving ourselves a break from the constant stream of thoughts and worries. But, my friends, I'm here to tell you that self-care is not a luxury, it's a necessity. It's the key to unlocking our full potential and achieving success in all aspects of our lives. When we take care of ourselves, we're better equipped to handle the challenges and obstacles that come our way. We have more energy, focus, and resilience to overcome any setbacks and keep moving forward. Now, let's talk about self-compassion. Self-compassion is the practice of treating ourselves with kindness, understanding, and forgiveness. It's about being our own best friend and ally, rather than our own worst critic. It means acknowledging our imperfections and mistakes but not beating ourselves up over them. It means giving ourselves the same love and compassion that we would give to a dear friend or family member. Many of us have a harsh inner critic that constantly tells us we're not good enough, smart enough, or capable enough. This negative self-talk can be detrimental to our self-esteem and confidence. It can hold us back from reaching our full potential. But with self-compassion, we can silence that inner critic and replace it with a kind, supportive voice. We can learn to be gentle with ourselves and accept that we are human and we will make mistakes. But those mistakes do not define us, and they do not diminish our worth. So, my friends, how do we practice self-care and self-compassion in our daily lives? It starts with small, intentional actions. It means taking breaks when we need them, saying no to things that drain us, and making time for activities that bring us joy and relaxation. It means setting boundaries with others and ourselves and not feeling guilty about it. It also means being mindful of our thoughts and replacing negative self-talk with positive affirmations. Self-care and self-compassion also involve taking care of our physical health. This means getting enough sleep, eating nutritious foods, and exercising regularly. When we prioritize our physical well-being, we have more energy and vitality to tackle our goals and dreams. But most importantly, self-care and self-compassion mean being kind to ourselves, especially in times of failure or setbacks. Instead of berating ourselves for our mistakes, we can practice self-compassion by acknowledging our efforts and giving ourselves a pep talk. We can remind ourselves that failure is a natural part of the journey to success and it does not define who we are. Which leads us to number four, which is to stop sabotaging your own success by taking responsibility for your actions. Now, you may be wondering, 
What does taking responsibility have to do with success? Well, my friends, let me tell you, it has everything to do with it. Success is not just about achieving your goals or reaching a certain level of wealth or status. It is about becoming the best version of yourself and living a life of purpose and fulfillment. And the only way to truly achieve that is by taking responsibility for your actions. So, what does it mean to take responsibility for your actions? It means owning up to your mistakes, acknowledging your shortcomings, and being accountable for the choices you make. It means not blaming others for your failures or expecting someone else to fix your problems. It means being in control of your life and understanding that you have the power to create your own success. Now, I know that taking responsibility is not always easy. It requires courage and humility. It means facing your fears and admitting when you are wrong. But let me tell you, my friends, the rewards are worth it. When you take responsibility for your actions, you gain a sense of control over your life. You become the driver of your own destiny, rather than a passenger. And that, my friends, is true freedom. You see, many people go through life playing the blame game. They blame their circumstances, their upbringing, their boss, their spouse, anyone and anything but themselves. But here's the truth. Blaming others will never lead to success. It will only hold you back and keep you from reaching your full potential. So, I urge you to stop playing the blame game and start taking responsibility for your actions. Now, I understand that some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what if my circumstances are truly out of my control? My response to that is, you may not be able to control what happens to you, but you can control how you respond to it. You can choose to let your circumstances defeat you, or you can choose to rise above them and use them as fuel to propel you towards success. The choice is yours. Taking responsibility also means being proactive. It means not waiting for someone else to solve your problems or waiting for the perfect opportunity to come knocking on your door. It means taking action and making things happen for yourself. As the saying goes, if you want something done, do it yourself. So, stop waiting for the perfect moment and start creating it. Another important aspect of taking responsibility is learning from your mistakes. We all make mistakes. It's a part of life. But what separates successful individuals from the rest is their ability to learn from their mistakes and use them as stepping stones towards success. So, don't be afraid to fail. Embrace your failures, learn from them, and use them to grow and become better. Furthermore, taking responsibility also means having a positive attitude. It means not dwelling on the past or worrying about the future. It means focusing on the present and making the best of every situation. A positive attitude is a powerful tool that can help you overcome any obstacle and achieve your goals. So, choose to see the good in every situation and watch how it transforms your life. Which leads us to number three, which is to stop sabotaging your own success by surrounding yourself with positive and supportive people. Now, I want you to take a moment and think about the people in your life. Are they positive and supportive? Do they encourage you to chase your dreams and reach for the stars? Or do they bring you down and make you doubt yourself? You see, my friends, the people you surround yourself with can either be your greatest asset or your biggest liability. They can either lift you up or bring you down. And it's up to you to choose who you want to surround yourself with. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So, if you want to be successful, you need to surround yourself with successful and positive people. Now, I know it's not always easy to let go of negative and unsupportive people in our lives. They may be our family members, friends, or even colleagues. But sometimes we need to make tough decisions for our own well-being and success. As the great Jim Ron once said, you cannot hang out with negative people and expect to live a positive life. So, it's time to evaluate the people in your life and make the necessary changes. Surrounding yourself with positive and supportive people is not just about having a cheerleading squad. It's about having a network of people who will challenge you, inspire you, and hold you accountable. These people will push you to be your best self and will not let you settle for mediocrity. But how do you find these positive and supportive people? Well, it starts with being a positive and supportive person yourself. You attract what you put out into the world. So, if you want to surround yourself with positive and supportive people, you need to be one yourself. Be kind, 
Be encouraging and be a source of positivity for others. This will not only attract like-minded people into your life, but will also make you a better person. Another way to find positive and supportive people is to join groups or communities that align with your goals and values. These can be networking groups, mastermind groups, or even online communities. Surrounding yourself with people who have similar goals and values as you will not only provide you with a support system, but also give you the opportunity to learn and grow together. Lastly, don't be afraid to let go of toxic relationships. As hard as it may be, sometimes we need to distance ourselves from people who bring negativity into our lives. This doesn't mean you have to completely cut them off, but it's important to set boundaries and limit your interactions with them. Remember, your mental and emotional well-being is just as important as your physical health. Which leads us to number two, which is to stop sabotaging your own success by setting realistic goals. Now, you may be wondering why this is the number two way. Shouldn't it be the number one way? Well, let me tell you this, my friends, without setting realistic goals, you will never even get to the point of sabotaging your own success. Setting realistic goals is the foundation of any successful journey. It is the roadmap that will guide you towards your dreams and aspirations. But what exactly do I mean by setting realistic goals? First and foremost, it means being honest with yourself. It means understanding your strengths and weaknesses, your limitations, and your potential. It means setting goals that are achievable and within your reach. Now, this doesn't mean that you should limit yourself or aim for mediocrity. No, my friends, it simply means that you should set goals that are challenging yet attainable. Let me give you an example. Let's say you want to start your own business. Your ultimate goal is to become a millionaire within the next five years. Now, that's a great goal to have, but is it realistic? Can you realistically become a millionaire in just five years? Perhaps, but it will require a lot of hard work, dedication, and a bit of luck. So, instead, why not set a more achievable goal, such as making $100,000 in the first year of your business? This goal is still challenging, but it is also more realistic and attainable. And once you achieve this goal, you can set even bigger goals for the following years. Another important aspect of setting realistic goals is to make them specific and measurable. Instead of saying, I want to lose weight, set a specific goal such as, I want to lose 20 pounds in the next six months. This way, you have a clear target to work towards, and you can track your progress along the way. And remember, my friends, progress is the key to success. As long as you are moving forward, even if it's just a small step at a time, you are on the right track. Now, I want to address a common misconception about setting realistic goals. Many people believe that setting realistic goals means playing it safe and settling for less. But let me tell you this, my friends, setting realistic goals does not mean settling for less. It simply means being smart and strategic about your goals. It means setting yourself up for success instead of failure. And let me ask you this. Would you rather achieve smaller goals and feel fulfilled, or set unrealistic goals and constantly feel disappointed and discouraged? Setting realistic goals also means being adaptable. Life is unpredictable, and things may not always go as planned. But that doesn't mean you should give up on your goals. Instead, be open to adjusting your goals when necessary. If you encounter a roadblock or a setback, don't be afraid to reassess and make changes. Remember, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And sometimes, the journey may take a different path than we originally planned. Now, I want to share with you a powerful quote from my mentor, Earl Scherf. He said, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. This quote perfectly encapsulates the essence of setting realistic goals. It's not about taking the easy way out. It's about continuously improving and becoming better versions of ourselves. And when we do that, we can achieve anything we set our minds to. My friends, setting realistic goals is the key to unlocking your full potential. It is the bridge that will take you from where you are to where you want to be. So, I urge you, don't sabotage your own success by setting unrealistic goals. Instead, be honest with yourself, set specific and measurable goals, and be adaptable. And most importantly, never stop striving to become better. Remember, the only limitations we have are the ones we set for ourselves. Which leads us to number one, 
which is to stop sabotaging your own success by identifying and challenging negative thought patterns. The first step towards achieving success is to become aware of our thoughts. We need to pay attention to the voices in our head and question their validity. Just because we think something doesn't mean it is true. For example, if you have a goal to start your own business but your mind is constantly telling you that you don't have what it takes, that you will fail, or that it's too risky, you need to challenge those thoughts. Ask yourself, where do these thoughts come from? Are they based on facts or just fear? Are they helping me or holding me back? Negative thought patterns often stem from our past experiences, our upbringing, or the opinions of others. But the good news is we have the power to change them. We can choose to let go of those limiting beliefs and replace them with empowering thoughts. The next step is to replace negative thoughts with positive ones. Instead of saying, I can't do this, say, I am capable and I will find a way. Instead of saying, I am not smart enough, say, I am constantly learning and growing. These may seem like small changes, but they can make a huge difference in how we approach our goals and ultimately our results. It is also important to surround ourselves with positive influences. The people we spend time with and the content we consume can have a significant impact on our thoughts and beliefs. Choose to spend time with people who uplift and inspire you, and consume content that motivates and educates you. Remember, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with, so choose wisely. Another powerful way to challenge negative thought patterns is to practice gratitude. When we focus on what we are grateful for, we shift our mindset from lack to abundance. We start to see the good in our lives and appreciate what we have rather than constantly focusing on what we don't have. Gratitude also helps us to maintain a positive outlook and attracts more positivity into our lives. But let's be real, changing our thought patterns is not an easy task. It takes time and effort, and we will face setbacks along the way. That's why it is important to be patient and kind to ourselves. We need to understand that we are not defined by our thoughts and we have the power to change them. It's like building a muscle. The more we practice, the stronger we become. In addition, we need to be mindful of the language we use, both in our thoughts and in our words. Our words have power, and they can either lift us up or bring us down. So instead of saying, I am a failure, say, I failed at this particular task, but I am not a failure. The small change in language can make a big difference in how we perceive ourselves and our abilities. Lastly, it is important to remember that success is not a destination, it is a journey. We will face challenges and failures, but those are just opportunities for growth and learning. It is how we respond to those challenges that will determine our success. So instead of letting negative thoughts hold us back, let's use them as fuel to propel us forward. Remember, our thoughts are not fact, and we have the power to change them. Let's choose to think positively, surround ourselves with positivity, practice gratitude, and be patient and kind to ourselves. And most importantly, let's take action towards our goals and dreams, because that is the only way we can turn them into reality. Thank you for listening, and I wish you all the best on your journey towards success. As I always say, success is not to be pursued, it is to be attracted by the person you become. So let's become the best version of ourselves and attract the success we deserve.